Margaret is talking with those two people over there. Wait, is that Rosaria? Huh. She's standing next to an adventurer Paimon doesn't recognize. Say no more, Valerina. I'll continue to help you out just as Victoria requested. Look after the cats, check up on their health, give them a bath. These are all things well within my capabilities. That doesn't solve our biggest problem, though, Miss Rosaria. The cats have been so anxious. If we can't get them to trust us, they're sure to get sick from all the anxiety. We just opened, and the Furball Fortress is already about to go under. Well, panicking certainly isn't going to solve the problem. The fact is, neither of us has a way with cats. That's not something I can change. Hi, Rosaria! And hello to you too, Miss Adventurer! Sounds like you're all really worried about something. Our cat saviors! They've appeared already! Uh, saviors? Uh, seems a bit sudden considering we just met. I'll try to keep it short. My name's Valerina, and I really like small animals. Recently, I've been trying to set up a shelter for stray cats. I call it the Furball Fortress. I thought it would be a good way to rescue those poor animals that have nowhere to go. Plus, getting them off the streets will improve the overall environment and look of the city. It's a win-win! The sisters over at the church heard about my plans and sent over the kindly Miss Rosaria to help. I wouldn't exactly describe myself as kindly. I just accepted the assignment from Victoria. After all, I was the only one with any knowledge of medicine, or the spare time to help. Well, it seems like you've got quite the plan, Valerina. Thanks for bringing us up to speed. So, what had you so worried just now? Are you short on Mora? Are you missing something you need? No, I've got more than enough Mora. The funds, the location, the supplies, all the various procedures, they've all been settled. The main problem is, um, the cats. They, uh, keep swatting at me. They're always hissing and swatting. They won't let me approach them, not even with treats. <sighs> the cats are afraid of me as well. They run away the minute I'm in the vicinity. Something like this before. There's something about certain people that just makes cats afraid. Huh. The kind hearted cat rescuer who doesn't get along with cats. Hmm. Seems like just visiting the cat's tail would be enough to leave you flustered, let alone running your own cat shelter. That's why we consulted an expert. But Miss Margaret wasn't able to offer a solution to our problem. She's short on workers, so she couldn't spare anyone to help us either. She did give us one piece of advice, though. To enlist the help of the Honorary Knight and their trusty helper in white. We had just wrapped up our conversation, and the next thing we knew, you two appeared before us like saviors sent by Lord Barbados himself. Well, Paimon's not sure how much Lord Barbados would know about taking care of cats. But that aside, we've never even worked at a shelter before, but somehow we've been turned into the saviors of the entire operation. True. Even if Paimon has no experience working at a shelter, she's confident she can get on their good side just fine. Like, that's all we need to do here, right? We just need to show Valerina and Rosaria how to get friendly with the cats, and everything else should fall into line. Feel free to focus your efforts on Valerina. Just call me if any of the cats need medical attention. Hmm. If you all can keep the shelter running with minimal effort on my part... This errand might turn out to be a good use of my time after all. It's better than church activities in any case. Ah, so that's why you agreed to help. You just wanted to shirk your church duties. Well, I guess I should show you around first. Follow me, you two. Let's make our way to the Furball Fortress. <laughs>
it's just a regular house. Uh, gotta say, Paimon was expecting something a little bigger with Fortress in the name and everything. This was the biggest space I could find in the city over the past few weeks. The rent is cheap, so that's a plus. A half a year's worth of rent, along with all the Cat's Tail-inspired furnishings, only cost me a few million mora. Of course, not all of the cats will be staying indefinitely. We plan to offer some of the healthy ones up for adoption. As long as the new future owners prove capable and the cat seems like a good fit, they're welcome to take their new pet back to a loving home. This location is definitely good enough. We could even expand the business one day and start sheltering stray dogs, foxes, or even squirrels. When that day comes, though, I'll probably have to think of a different name. Huh, maybe the... Furball and Friends Fortress would be a better fit. <laughs> I would suggest letting all of this play out first. You still don't know if the customers will even get along with the strays. Huh? Look over there! That cat is staring at us. Oh, it's the little white cat. She's super afraid of people. She ran away when we tried to give her a bath. It took us forever to track her down again. She looks so soft and clean, and her fur is so white and fluffy, just like fresh falling snow. Wait, that's perfect! We should call her Snowball! Ooh, those are some good names, Traveler, but... She likes Snowball best. Here, kitty, kitty. That's it, Snowball. Good kitty. That's a good kitty. It, it's been, what, a minute? And you already got the cat to listen to you. Did you see that, Miss Rosaria? She's practically a miracle worker. You really are a cat whisperer. Ah, uh, that was nothing. They may be strays, but as long as you give them a good name and call them with love, you're sure to gain their trust eventually. First things first, though. You gotta pay attention to the way you interact with them. Um, how should Paimon put it? Basically, it all comes down to your demeanor. For example, you can't just stand there trembling in fear, Valerina. If you're afraid, the cats are sure to become afraid as well. As for you, Rosaria, you might want to keep an eye on your, uh, facial expressions. These poor creatures, picked up off the streets, given a name, and they now have a loving home. Fate is kind to even the lost souls who have wandered astray. This city really has brought peace and happiness to us all. Snowball is snuggling up to Rosaria! Looks like she's not afraid of her anymore. Did Rosaria just... smile? No matter. There are more important things to focus on. Anyway, it's getting a bit stuffy in here. I I'm going to go get some air. Call me if you need me. Huh. Paimon thought Rosaria would be happier about that. Please. Teach me more of your ways, honorary knight. And you too, oh great cat whisperer. We're sure to get more and more strays coming to the Furball Fortress, and I doubt all of them will be as friendly as Snowball. There's still so much I don't know about interacting with them. No problem, just watch and learn. It's about time we move on to a more advanced lesson. How to get the cats not to just trust you, but to like you. It's all about patience. As long as you put in the effort to get to know them, you'll become best friends in no time. I completely understand. The Furball Fortress is still in its trial phase. So the more I can learn at this stage, the better.
You should probably give him some space. Get too close and all that swatting might catch you in the face. Oh no, seems like Valerina has run into some more cat-sized trouble. 
honorary knight! Cat Whisperer! This big cat just barged in here after Snowball! He must have spotted her when she went out for a walk and followed her all the way back here! Easy, easy. No one's going to hurt you here. All those evil things, all those bad people who forced you to do whatever it took to survive, they can't find you here. You're safe within these walls. You're surrounded by good people now. Their constant hovering might get a little annoying, but it's all for your own good. Just relax. A life of leisure isn't a bad thing, you know. You just have to get used to it. He... he understood all that? Looks like it worked. <laughs> Smart cat. Whoa, this cat is way bigger than the others. His coloring looks like fresh squeezed buell fruit juice. And he's wearing a scarf too! Huh? Looks like there's some sort of sign on it. Oh, it's the symbol of the Knights of Avonius! He deserves a name fit for a knight then. Hmm, he is pretty feisty. How about Sir Pancelot? You really do have a way with cats. He looks way more at ease now. Paimon thinks you deserve to take the credit this time. Sir Pancelot seemed to calm down right after everything you said to him. It doesn't matter to me either way. Although, the fact that they're cute doesn't hurt. Let Paimon show you how to put Sir Pancelot completely at ease. Paimon just needs to work a bit more of her magic and he'll be as happy as can be.
city, Sir Pouncelot. You better be on your best behavior from now on, okay? Don't go causing trouble now. <laughs> I'm a nosier, sweet, happy little cat. You'll get along with everyone just fine. He's so adorable. I just want to scratch his head and pinch his little cheeks. He does have a certain endearing quality about him. When he's not causing trouble, that is. Huh. I wonder how he got that injury around his eye. The traces of restorative potion indicate that Sir Pouncelot should be in the vicinity. Huh? Oh, it's the Traveler, Paimon, and Sister Rosaria. Uh, and you must be an adventurer. I don't believe we've met. It appears Sir Pouncelot has taken quite the liking to you. Albedo! It's been such a long time! It's super great to see you! Uh, but are you sure you're in the right place? I'm assuming the captain of the investigation team is here for some important reason. C captain He's a captain of the Knights of Favonius? An important officer just showed up without warning. And I don't even have any refreshments or snacks to offer! Please, allow me to explain, sir. I assure you, this shelter is operating under a legitimate business license. All proper procedures have been followed. There's no need to worry. I was simply in the area helping my team address a small issue. Namely, the location of this cat right here. Not too long ago, Interim Team Feline Treatment Case Number 3, Sir Pouncelot, knocked out the weapons officer who was watching over him. He then fled and disappeared into the city. We knew we had to recover him as fast as possible. The cat belongs to the investigation team and even bears the insignia of the Knights of Favonius. If he were to wreak havoc across the city, well, that would hardly be a welcome result for any party involved. You're saying Sir Pouncelot is capable of knocking out a knight? And what's with all those official-sounding titles you added to his name? Interim treatment case something or other? Is there something else you're not telling us? Uh, well, I suppose I should explain. Two months ago, Sir Pouncelot got lost in the wild and accidentally ingested Whopper Flower Nectar. Due to certain effects that are not entirely understood as of yet, the nectar caused him to triple in size. Triple? Even regular sized cats can get pretty bold when they're upset. A cat triple the size? Oh, Paimon bets even a hilly churl wouldn't be enough to scare off a cat like that. So that's what happened. No wonder he was so anxious. For cats, or really any animal that lives in the wild, a larger size doesn't exactly confer many advantages. What it actually does is make their appearance more noticeable and their movements less nimble. Which in turn means living in perpetual danger of exposing themselves to attacks from predators. In other words, it means living in a constant state of fear. Exactly. When Sir Pouncelot stumbled upon our encampment, he looked quite worse for wear. His entire body was riddled with scars, and he appeared exceptionally anxious. <laughs> That's awful. I guess he had a good reason for all that swatting earlier then. If all that had happened to me, I would be afraid of new people and strange animals too. You don't need to worry too much. The problem has already been solved. I administered a restorative potion to eliminate the alchemical effects of the Whopper Flower Nectar and help him return to a normal size. Although he still might appear a bit larger than the average cat, his current size, at least, should pose no more threat to his quality of life. While in our care, various knights have been taking turns watching over him. In light of his feisty demeanor, Klee decided to call him Sir Pouncelot, but we all thought it was quite fitting. We even made him that little scarf as a testament to his time among our ranks. Whoa! Klee and Paimon were totally on the same wavelength with this one! We thought of the exact same name! Great minds really do think alike. 
<laughs> Sir Pouncelot's extreme level of anxiety and caution around people may be a result of residual trauma from the time of his transformation. You could say he was less than friendly towards the weapons and signals officers on our team. Klee wasn't around that much to entertain him either. However, it appears Sir Pouncelot has taken quite the liking to you. The knights on my team would never have imagined he could warm up to people like this. <laughs> well, they are our dear cat saviors after all. The famed honorary knight and Paimon the Cat Whisperer. No matter how feisty or frightening the cat, after a few minutes with the Traveler and Paimon, they'll be as sweet as can be. If that's the case, then... I have a question for you both. Would you be willing to adopt Sir Pouncelot? Wait, really? But doesn't he belong to your team? Well, we did take him in, but it was simply out of necessity. We were always planning to find him a permanent home after his condition became more stable. The investigation team is no place for a pet. We are a combat unit, after all. Any night he got close to would have to go on assignment eventually. It's hardly appropriate to just leave him at camp. And bringing him on our missions would only frighten him further. All good points. He's been through quite the ordeal already. For a creature like that, it's best to keep him away from potential triggers. That way, he can slowly recover in peace. Hmm... We could set up a nice, cozy little home for him in the Serena Teapot. It has everything he could want! And most importantly, no monsters. Oh, no need to thank me. If you find yourselves with some time on your hands, maybe you can bring him by the encampment sometime. I'm sure my fellow knights would love a chance to see his calmer side. <laughs> that was so touching! I can't believe I got to witness such a special moment! I do believe this counts as the Furball Fortress's first successful adoption! Hey, my veil is not a handkerchief. It appears you enjoy interacting with small animals, Sister Rosaria. I must admit, I find that a bit surprising. Paimon can also sense that you're an animal lover, Rosaria. You definitely have a way with cats. You just haven't realized it yet. After all, it's not a side of you that comes out very often. Snowball warmed up to you right from the start, and you were the one that helped Sir Pouncelot calm down back there. Oh, uh, I didn't really do anything, though. I was just... there. Ah, I've got it! I've learned so many useful tips from our dear cat saviors recently. I've decided to extend the shelter's trial period for a bit in order to go over what I've learned. With some effort, I hope I can be a cat whisperer too one day. For now, though, I'll settle for cat whisperer... In training. <laughs> when I open for good, what do you say we run the shelter together, Miss Rosaria? With the two of us, we could rescue every stray in Mondstadt. Hmm, the sister and the whisperer working together. Almost sounds like it was meant to be. <laughs> oh, well, this errand hasn't proved to be too troublesome. It's light on work and stress. I suppose... I wouldn't be opposed to your suggestion. I don't know much about rescuing stray animals, but this seems to be quite the milestone. Allow me to offer my congratulations. If my fellow knights run into any strays, I'll be sure to tell them to send them your way. Thank you, thank you, thank you! I really can't thank you all enough for your support! Don't worry. There's a generous reward in store for each and every one of you. 
the trial phase of the Furball Fortress could not have been more successful. When we open for good, you all simply must come to the opening ceremony. We'll cut the ribbon together. Now that's what Paimon calls a successful commission. Rewarding in more ways than one. Mora, a sense of accomplishment, and of course, our special friend, Sir Pantalot. Talk about a win, win, win. Paimon can't wait for the Furball Fortress to open for good. Thank <laughs> you.